Um, okay, it's recording. So you're good to go. Okay, great. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome everybody to the CUNY Set Theory Seminar. Uh, we're very pleased to have as our lecturer today, Gabe Goldberg of uh, the University of California at Berkeley. And he will speak to us about the hot conjecture and the structure of elementary. Let me, let me shut off my car. Hold on. Okay, go ahead, Gabe. Uh, okay, so um, I I'm talking about the hot conjecture. So thanks, Arthur. Um, the, the question basically, I guess the less technical, more philosophical question is, um, is every set definable? Um, so uh, obviously not every set is definable, uh, definable because there are only countably many definable sets, but um, so is every set definable from an ordinal parameter? Question. So does V equal hod? Could you speak a bit louder, please? Uh, yeah, is it, is it hard for everyone to hear me? Yes, Gabe, a little louder uh, would be good. I think because you're, you're outside, there are some sound issues. Okay, uh, is this better? Yes. <laughs> okay, so is every set definable from an ordinal? And of course, this is the question of whether V is equal to hod, and that's independent of ZFC. And it's independent of all reasonable large cardinal axioms, which I'll be assuming. Um, so the, the Hod conjecture is a, a more tractable version. So of this same question, it's just is V close to Hod? Can, can arbitrary sets be approximated by definable ones? And um, so this question also is related to important technical open problems in set theory, especially in our model theory. So I'll talk about that too. Um, and the, the point of the talk is to discuss how the Hod conjecture is related to um, to the the large cardinal structure and constraints on large cardinals uh, in V. So I guess usually when people talk about the, the Hod conjecture, uh, they start with this analogy between Hod and the constructible universe L. So um, the, the Hod conjecture, you can think of it as a, a version of Jensen's covering lemma, which is you know, the, the greatest theorem of the 1970s in set theory. Um, so that's, um, just to remember it, it says basically either Gödel's constructible universe L is close to Hod, I mean, is close to V, or it's very far from V. So in, in case one is that every set of ordinals, well, every uncountable set of ordinals, is contained in a constructible set of the same cardinality. So it can be sort of approximated from above by a constructible set, um, but doesn't get too much bigger. So th this implies um, lots of closeness properties between the universe and L, the constructible universe. So for example, if 
lambda is a singular cardinal. Then lambda is a singular cardinal in L. And um, L correctly computes the successor of lambda. So, um, and um, if one fails, then L has to be extremely far away from from V. So the the way one way of saying that in terms of large cardinals is that there's an elementary embedding from L to itself. Um, it's not at all obvious at the outset that that means that L is a small model, but it does. It implies um, every uncountable cardinal is inaccessible. In L, and in fact, every uncountable cardinal is malo and weakly compact. Every large cardinal property that can hold in L holds of every uncountable cardinal. And it actually implies that the, the uncountable cardinals are indiscernible. In L. So L can't distinguish between uncountable cardinals, um, which is basically why they have all these large cardinal properties. So one means V is close to L and two means V is very far. Um, and uh, so it's natural to ask which one is true if, if you ask that kind of question. Um, and uh, the only reasonable answer seems to be two, um, that, that V is far from L, just all large cardinal axioms, like a measurable cardinal, or a Ramsey cardinal, uh, they all imply two, um, that there's an embedding from L to L. And in fact, all sufficiently strong natural theories imply two. So uh, w once you even state any set theory that has any strength, even if it isn't a large cardinal axiom, it'll imply uh, that L is very far from V. So I don't know, determinacy axioms, uh, forcing axioms, everything. So given that L is not a good approximation to V, at least assuming large cardinal axioms, the, the inner model program has a goal of um, constructing analogs of L that approximate V better. Sorry, Gabe, can I just ask, uh, did you say that like all, like even projective determinacy implies two? Is that? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Actually, okay. Um, uh, two is equivalent to light phase pi one one determinacy the Martin Harrington theorem. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so analogs of L that approximate V better. Um, so by analogs of L, it turns out that this is really the same thing as a uh, canonical inner model. of uh, large cardinal axioms. So I'm defining one big term with another. Uh, so the 
what I really mean it is that these models are sort of minimal models constructed to have large cardinals in them. So for example, uh, to get past L in, in case two, you, you could add an elementary embedding from L to L into the construction. So um, you could construct relative to an embedding like this, and that'll give you a model that is canonical and beyond L. And all these models will have analogs of, of the covering lemma. Um, and one issue is that uh, large cardinals, for all the inner models that we know of, uh, large cardinals imply the analog of two. So uh, you don't really get that much better at approximating B. So the current status of the inner model program which which large cardinals are known to have canonical inner models? Well, uh, sort of, I mean, it's it's amazing that, that any large cardinals far past immeasurable have canonical inner models. No other axioms do have canonical inner models. Um, can, even canonical models of other axioms, set theory aren't really known. So it, it's very impressive how far the inner model program has gone, but it's still well below the, the large cardinals that have been defined. So the current status is I mean, the, best, the best known inner model for the largest. The largest large cardinal that's known to have a canonical inner model is basically a wooden limit of wooden cardinals. So that's, that's below. Uh, kappa is kappa plus super compact. So for a long time, the, the goal of inner model theory has been to construct inner models with super compact cardinals. And there are some conditional results, but uh, this is the best unconditional result that's known. So the inner model problem is to build canonical models for all large cardinal axioms. Um, and sort of it's the, the, the main problem or the main goal of inner model theory, but it's, it's vague because what's, what's a canonical model really? So the term large cardinal axiom is also vague, but you can ask for a canonical model for a super compact cardinal and that's already hard enough. Um, so, so one way of making this question less vague is to state test questions. So, so any canonical model should be definable. And even definably well-ordered. So, contained in pod, right? If any class, any definable class that's definably well-ordered uh, is consists only of ordinal definable sets because you can define a set from its rank in that well-order. And um, so a, a transitive class that's definably well-ordered is contained in the hereditarily ordinal definable sets. Um, so, so if there were canonical models for all, all large cardinal axioms, so uh, models that sort of get beyond this uh, part two of the, the Jensen covering dichotomy, then you might expect maybe Hod covers B in this case. So instead of Hod being a small model, having something like two, maybe even an embedding from Hod to Hod, maybe you can just prove, say, assuming large cardinals, that, that Hod is close to V, that sets in V can be approximated by ordinal definable sets. It sounds sort of implausible because how are you gonna define a set that approximates an arbitrary set? Doesn't seem like you have a lot to work with, but that's the test question. So 
is v close to hod. And I'll state it in a more precise way in a second. So Wooden's hod dichotomy theorem is a version of the Jensen dichotomy, uh, the, an abstract version for hod. So uh, it, it's, um, it's only stated under large cardinal hypotheses. So the, the hypothesis that Wooden used is an extendable cardinal. I'll talk about proving the hot dichotomy from weaker hypotheses later in the talk. But uh, an extendable cardinal is a, a cardinal kappa such that for all lambda, uh, there's an elementary embedding j from v lambda to v lambda prime, some larger lambda prime, such that kappa is equal to the critical point j. And uh, since I'm going to be talking about these in the context for the axiom of choice isn't true, I have to say this. So uh, this is unnecessary if you're working in ZFC, but at some point I'm going to work in ZF with extendable cardinals. So, so but for now, everything is, is ZFC. So Wooden's theorem says that exactly one of the following holds. One is that HOD covers V, um, but above the extendable cardinal kappa. So every set of ordinals of size, at least kappa, is covered, uh, it's contained in an ordinal definable set of the same size. So it's exactly like Jensen's theorem. Uh, except ordinal definability is replacing constructability. So it's a, a much broader form of definability. Um, so this implies, for example, that every singular cardinal above kappa is singular in a hod. And lambda plus is computed in a hod is the true lambda plus. Um, and I guess I should say, yeah, uh, an OD set, it's the same as saying a set in hod, right? Because you can assume it's a set of ordinals and an ordinal definable set of ordinals is hereditarily ordinal definable because its elements are ordinals, which are definitely ordinal definable. Okay. Uh, or two, um, so this is a lot weaker than two of Jensen's theorem. Uh, well, in some sense, it says every regular cardinal greater than or equal to kappa is measurable. So there's something to think about here. You have to say regular uh, or else it won't be true. Uh, in Jensen's theorem, it was every uncountable cardinal uh, is inaccessible in L. So you can't prove that every uncountable cardinal is measurable in L. Uh, in case two, because there can't be any measurable cardinals in L. Uh, but Hod can have measurable cardinals. And so, so Wooden got that every regular cardinal is measurable in Hod. There will be singular cardinals that aren't, aren't singular in Hod, like kappa plus omega, or kappa is your extendable cardinal. It's necessarily singular in Hod because of the sequence kappa, kappa plus, kappa plus plus, kappa plus plus plus. So that's cofinal in kappa plus omega and it's OD. We just defined it. So, so some cardinals have to be singular in Hod, but uh, 
the regular cardinals are, are measurable in HUD. So they seem like, I mean, conceivably, and I haven't really had time to think about it, but conceivably every, the, the class of regular cardinals is, um, their, their order in discernibles. And that's, that's what this is sort of hinting at, but it doesn't seem like you can prove that just assuming one fails. Okay, so the, the hot dichotomy says that under large cardinal hypotheses, either V is very close to hot or V is pretty far from hot. Um, Gabe? Yeah. Can I just ask, so if kappa and kappa prime are two different extendable cardinals, is it possible that one of them could satisfy one and the other one could satisfy two? Um, no, because uh, if, if this is true for kappa, then it's going to be true for any larger kappa. So and when you said this, which one were you referring to? <laughs> uh, both. both. Uh, okay. So if, if one is, is true for for kappa, it's true for any larger kappa, and same for two. So. Oh, I see. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thanks. So the question is really about the the first extendable cardinal. Okay. Um, and it turns out I'll talk about it later that it's really about the the first super compact cardinal or the first strongly compact cardinal. So the extendable cardinals are are not really the the right large cardinal to be looking at here. Well. Sorry, in your definition of extendable, could you go back? Yeah. So lambda can't be kappa then, because uh, kappa, yeah. kappa couldn't be the critical point. Yeah. Sure. Um. Okay, so the, the HOD hypothesis, this is just terminology and I'm gonna state it sort of wrong. So as far as this talk goes, the HOD hypothesis is the statement that there is a proper class measurables uh, of regular cardinals that are not measurable. And hot. So it's the negation of two here. Um, so the, the actual hot hypothesis is defined by Wooden and it's slightly uh, weaker. It says that there's a proper class of regular cardinals that are not strongly measurable in hot or omega strongly measurable in hot, which is a, a weaker statement because you're strengthening the thing that's not true. Um, but uh, in the context of large cardinals, that these two things are equivalent. Um, so this is the hot hypothesis as, as far as we're concerned. Um, the, the thing about the hot hypothesis is that no large cardinal can refute it. So in other words, no large cardinal axiom uh, uh, two of the Hod conjecture uh, of the Hod dichotomy theorem. So that that's very different from the situation uh, for L where all large cardinal axioms basically imply uh, the two of Jensen's dichotomy is true. So why, why can't large cardinal axioms refute uh, the hot hypothesis or imply two? Well, the, the reason is that, um, the reason is that all large cardinal axioms uh, or all reasonable ones are consistent with V, with V is equal to HUD. So you don't consider an elementary embedding from HUD to itself to be a reasonable axiom? 
not not right now no um but i'll talk about them uh yeah so all, all large cardinals consistent with choice are consistent with b is equal to hud um because basically because you can always force b to be equal to hot and, and preserve at least large cardinals that are currently considered possible so for example super compacts and extendables and huge cardinals are they're all consistent with v being equal to hot and if v is equal to hot then the hot hypothesis is very much true right because all the successor cardinals are are not going to be measurable. Lots of cardinals are not going to be measurable in hot if v is equal to hot. So uh, the hot conjecture, which is Wooden's conjecture, I didn't conjecture this. Uh, the hot conjecture states that the hot hypothesis. is provable uh, from large cardinals, say an extendable. Okay, uh, the, the weaker version of the hot hypothesis in terms of these omega strongly measurables conceivably could be provable in ZFC. Uh, but this stronger version uh, is not provable in ZFC. There, there are there is a model where all regular cardinals are measurable in HOD, but, um, but under large cardinal hypotheses, uh, it, it's un unknown whether this can hold. So if, if there's a super compact cardinal, it's, it's not at all clear that the HOD hypothesis uh, can, can fail. So wooden conjectures that the HOD hypothesis is provable from an extendable. And the basic idea is, well, no large cardinals can refute it. So, so how could you ever really justify believing it? Um, for example, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more about that. So, so yeah, th there are certain less plausible large cardinal hypotheses that uh, do uh, refute, or, or yeah, they they refute the hot hypothesis. Um, so the first kind that I'm going to talk about are are large cardinals uh, beyond the axiom of choice, or choiceless large cardinals. So this, this kind of idea sort of starts with Kuhnin's theorem that there's no elementary embedding from V to itself. So the the, the way you're supposed to Read Kuhnin's theorem is element. Uh, large cardinal axioms are stated in terms of elementary embeddings, often from the universe of sets V into an inner model. Uh, as you increase the size of the inner model, you get a stronger large cardinal axiom, but you can't have the strongest large cardinal axiom, which is an elementary embedding from V to V, at least the strongest of that form. But that's a little bit misleading because that there are but much weaker forms of this uh, axiom that can be refuted in ZFC. Um, v lambda plus two to V lambda plus two for any ordinal lambda. Okay, the question is, um, what if you drop the axiom of choice? The, the proof of Kuhnin's theorem, and actually the many proofs of Kuhnin's theorem, there are like 10, uh, all of them use different combinatorial consequences of AC. Um, and at, even in Kuhnin's original paper, he raised this question, what if you drop the axiom of choice? He actually also asked, what if you assume the axiom of determinacy, which is also an interesting question, sort of weird to think about how something like the axiom of determinacy, which is really about sets of real numbers, could even affect uh, the large cardinal structure of the universe, but still, it's un unclear. So what if you drop the axiom of choice? 
Um, and it seems like if you drop the axiom of choice, you, you, uh, you cannot refute this principle. Um, obviously, that, that's not something you can really prove by, you know, girdle incompleteness. You're, you're not going to prove that you can't refute something. But uh, it, it seems actually like there's a whole hierarchy of choiceless large cardinals that are much stronger than, than the principle Kunin refuted. Um, so this strange thing, I guess, is that these uh, refute the Hod hypothesis. So under ZF with these large cardinal hypotheses, Uh, v has to be very close from, uh, very far to Hod, very far from Hod. Uh, basically, because if V is close to Hod, then that's saying something like the axiom of choice is true. So Hod is definably well-ordered. Um, so if V is too close to Hod, then you can well-order too many sequences of ordinals. I feel like I'm okay. I'm not frozen. So uh, wouldn't prove that assuming the consistency of these choiceless large cardinal axioms, you can actually uh, refute the Hod conjecture. So uh, what he proved is if there's an embedding from V to V, and proper class of extendables. Probably much less works um, than the hot conjecture is false. So remember the hot conjecture said that the hot hypothesis is provable from an extendable. Um, so this is really saying if there's a J from V to V and a proper class of extendables, then it's consistent with an extendable cardinal that the hot hypothesis fails. So it's consistent with an extendable that- Conjecture, if there is a J V to V and a proper class of extendables, then the hot conjecture is false. Okay, so- can okay, sort Gabe, of can, I, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, this is stated in terms of consistency. Is, is what wouldn't prove really that if you have a, a J from V to V and a proper class of extendables, then there's some kind of forcing construction that you can do, or is this some kind of, you know, cheating, you know, arithmetic? Uh, no. Yeah, um, no, it's, it's forcing. So I'll actually sketch what we did. So uh, the, what you use is that if you have a J from V to V and Lambda is a limit of extendable cardinals, uh, then, then Lambda plus uh, is measurable in Hod. I mean, that's just one way to do it. Um, actually, you can prove that uh, in this context, Lambda plus is measurable in V. So it's a uh, sort of you know, in the context of the negation of the axiom of choice, successor cardinals can be measurable. Um, and, and that actually follows from these choiceless large cardinal axioms. Um, but then if there's a proper class of extendable cardinals, you can force the axiom of choice by class forcing. Um, it follows from a proper class of Super compact cardinals. That's that's what wouldn't prove, but actually Usuba recently proved that it follows from a proper class of much weaker large cardinals, something called Lowenheim Skolem cardinals. But let's work with the extendable cardinals because the thing is, you can force the axiom of choice by this class forcing uh, while preserving all the extendable cardinals. <laughs> Uh, 
by the way, you need some kind of large cardinal hypothesis uh, in order to prove that you can force the axiom of choice. Um, there are models of ZF that have no extension satisfying ZFC, the same old ones. For example, Giddick's model where every uh, uncountable cardinal is singular can't be extended to a model of ZFC because the model of ZFC would have a proper class of regular cardinals and those would be regular. Okay, so you can class force the axiom of choice while preserving the extendable cardinals um, and the, the forcing uh, is weakly homogeneous and definable. Which means it only makes Hod smaller if it, if it changes Hod at all. So Hod gets smaller, so that means that all these uh, limits of extendables, their successors, um, are, are still not going to be correctly computed by Hod. But we said before that if the Hod hypothesis holds, then all successors of singular cardinals are correctly computed by Hod above the first extendable. So that means that uh, in this model of AC that you've produced by class forcing, the Hod hypothesis is false. And there are lots of. Um, Dave, but, can I ask a clarification? Yeah. Um, so you said that you need uh, that, that being able to force the axiom of choice has large cardinal strength. Uh, no, just that, um, that you can't right, always do it. Yeah. You can't always do it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just misunderstood. If, if it's true, then if AC is true, then it's very easy to force the axiom. Okay. And Kuba's uh, principle that he uses to force the axiom of choice is actually a weak consequence of AC. Um, something like, uh, a version of the lone high school theorem that follows also from large cardinals. Okay, yeah, I think I know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the remark that I meant to make here is that um, in the model that Wooden produces, you have J from Todd to Hall. Um, the reason is that the embedding J from B to V restricts to an embedding from Hod to Hod, uh, and it also restricts to an embedding from Hod of, of this forcing extension. Got it. Forcing extension. So this shows not only uh, is the failure of the Hod hypothesis distant relative to these course, large cardinal axioms, uh, but in fact. The, um, the analog of uh, two of Jensen's theorems, so a J from L to L, the Hod analog is consistent relative to choice of large cardinal axioms. So it could be that ZFC is consistent with embedding from Hod to Hod. So part of what's implausible about the Hod conjecture is that uh, it's refuted by large cardinal axioms, but only by large cardinal axioms beyond choice. So if you think the Hod conjecture is true, you must think that the uh, large cardinals beyond choice are inconsistent. So you can say it's a conjecture of the inconsistency of a large cardinal. Um, conjectures like that don't have a great track record. Okay. So embeddings of Hod. It's an open question whether in ZFC there can be an elementary embedding from hot to hot. Uh, that is one of the few questions of this form its answer isn't known. Um, one thing that is proved uh, is, is that you can't have a definable embedding from hot to hot. It's also this, the same thing is known about uh, embeddings from V to V. There can't be a, a definable from parameters embedding from V to V or a definable from parameters embedding from hot to hot. And the reason, you know, one way to prove it is um, any 
definable embedding from HOD to HOD. Um, would have to exist in a, a forcing extension of HOD. So if, if something is, any class that's definable from parameters is, uh, is an, say a class of ordinals that's definable from parameters is an amenable class of a forcing extension, set forcing extension of HOD. So uh, HOD of G, well, I guess J contained in hot of G, all the fragments of J. And uh, you, can't, you can't force a J from B to B. So this is another theorem. You can't force over a model of ZFC to create an embedding from the ground model to itself. So if you had a definable from parameters embedding from HOD to HOD, you would be able to force over HOD to add an embedding from HOD to HOD. How do you, Gabe, how do you argue that you can force this with set forcing, you said? So uh, the, the point is, um, if J is definable from parameters, then it's in HOD sub P for some parameter P. But, um, really should have said that HOD sub P for some parameter P is always a set forcing extension of HOD. Oh, I see. Okay. So that's, that's Vopenka's theorem. Okay, got it. Okay, so uh, for a long time it was open uh, w whether in the context of the HOD hypothesis and large cardinal axioms there could be an elementary embedding from HOD to HOD. So even in this case where V is close to HOD, it was unknown whether there could be a, an elementary embedding from HOD to HOD. And the problem was always that um, under the HOD hypothesis, if there's an extendable cardinal, you know that V is very close to HOD above the extendable cardinal. But what we couldn't rule out was that the embedding had critical point below the extendable cardinal. And it's, uh, somehow much harder to control. Actually, if the, the reason it was okay if they, uh, the critical point is above the extendable cardinal is that basically any elementary embedding of HOD whose critical point is above the extendable is, is in HOD, if you assume the HOD hypothesis. So all large cardinals are uh, are amenable. Can, can you still hear me? I think someone is mowing, mowing along, so I might need to move if, if no one can hear me. No, it's fine. We can, I can hear you. Okay, okay great. So the uh, sort of recent theorem is that under the HOD hypothesis, um, if there's a strongly compact cardinal, No embedding from HOD to itself. So at least um, the at least you can sort of extend the analogy with uh, the the Jensen covering theorem. <coughs> so when when HOD is close to V, HOD is also rigid. Close to V, there's there can't be it. So this is sort of uh, what you'd expect, and it's true. Sort of annoying. Um, it, it's not clear that uh, if you if you get rid of your strongly compact cardinal and you just assume uh, the correct version of the hot hypothesis for ZFC, um, that, that you can prove there's no J from hot to hot. So maybe that is consistent. So uh, given these facts about embeddings of HOD, you can ask whether there's a complete analog of the Jensen covering lemma. So this would say something like either uh, HOD covers E 
above your extendable cardinal or there's a J from hot to hot. So that, that would be an analog of the Jensen covering lemma. Um, this isn't really the right way to state it because um, an embedding from hot to hot can never be definable. So you can't hope that a first order hypothesis will imply the existence of an embedding from hot to hot. Because you could just get rid of all the, you, you could restrict only to definable classes. And now you have a model of whatever first order hypotheses you started with, but it has no embedding from hot to hot. That sort of points out a, another distinction between the, the case for L and the case for HOD. If there's an embedding from L to L, there's always a definable one, a canonical definable one. So that, that's another way in which the existence of an embedding from L to L is more plausible than one from HOD to HOD. There's a complete analysis of the embedding from L to L. So you could ask, um, if kappa is extendable and the hot hypothesis is false, um, then for delta greater than kappa, uh, is there a J from hod uh, up to delta into hod to delta? Sorry. And um, probably it's consistent that that there isn't. Like um, you could start with the assumption that you've got your extendable and the hot hypothesis fails, and then somehow try to force that there's no such embedding. And I, I feel like that could be doable. So that that would say that um, that you know, given that the hot hypothesis isn't just provable, uh, its failure is, is consistent with, with no such analog of Jensen decoupling. But I don't know, this, this could be provable. And I'm just gonna state some like weak analogs that are provable. So first, um, embeddings into HOD. So these seem sort of like analogs of embedding from embeddings from hot to hot. The thing is, if you have an embedding from a model into L uh, or into an initial segment of L, then that model has to be an initial segment of L. That's uh, the condensation lemma. But the the same thing is not true for hot. So you can ask about instead of embeddings from levels of hot to levels of hot. Can ask about embeddings from models into hot. Um, so here's one equivalent version of the the hot hypothesis, I guess, or its failure. Um, so say an embedding is kappa elementary. If um, whenever you have a less than kappa size subset of the domain model, you can extend the embedding to act on that. So any elementary embedding is omega elementary. If you have any finite uh, collection of elements of M and you add it into M, you get this elementary you know, elementarity. So kappa elementarity is, is true of uh, embeddings that have critical point at least kappa as long as this model is closed under less than kappa sequences. So an embedding that's kappa elementary sort of looks like the restriction to this small model of an embedding of a model that is closed under kappa sequences and uh, has critical point for it. Does that make sense? Like the, the this is the only way, so assuming at least that the embedding has critical point 
uh, greater than or equal to kappa, this is the only way you could hope to extend the embedding uh, act on these small sets sigma. And saying that it's kappa elementary just means that it works. Okay. Uh, so if kappa is either the hot hypothesis holds, or for all regular cardinals, uh, delta greater than or equal to kappa, uh, there's uh, kappa elementary j from n to hod, uh, where um, not to hod, but to hod up to v delta. Um, here, n is an inner model of v delta. Okay, so it's, this kind of embedding sort of looks like the restriction of, a, of an embedding of a, a bigger model. Um, the, the point of Kappa Elementary here is that you want to be able to prove that uh, two implies the failure of the hot hypothesis. And uh, this is sort of natural in the embedding that makes it possible. If if you don't assume kappa elementary, then then this is not going to imply the hot hypothesis because it, as I'll say in a second, it just follows from from uh, delta being a Janssen cardinal. And hod can have Janssen cardinals, so it's a Janssen cardinal. Uh, cardinal lambda is Janssen if. Uh, for any function from lambda to the less than omega into lambda, uh, there is a large set A, a proper subset of lambda, such that the cardinality of A is equal to lambda and uh, A closed under F. So L has no Janssen cardinals. Um, they're beyond the kind of large cardinals that can exist in L. Their um, Janssen cardinals are equal consistent with Ramsey cardinals. So I, I think something like every Janssen cardinal is Ramsey and L is true. I mean, <laughs> no, in K. Uh, you can't have Ramsey cardinals in L. So the, the, the problem is that, yeah, Janssen cardinals are, are too large to exist in L. Uh, and in fact, a, a version of um, J from L to L is actually uh, equivalent to, uh, to a kind of Janssen cardinal. Uh, so lambda is constructively Janssen if for any constructible f from lambda to the less than omega to lambda, there is some large a contained in lambda with cardinality of a equal to lambda and f inch a to the less than omega contained in a. So you don't, you can't demand that a is constructible because if you said that a was constructible here, then Lambda would just be Janssen in L. Um, that, this would just be stating that Lambda is Janssen in L. But instead, you state that for any constructible f, you can find such an a. So that it's uh, sort of saying that Lambda looks very big in L, but L can't quite see how big. Um, and the fact is that. Um, There is a J from L to L, if and only if um, there is a constructively Janssen cardinal. And if and only if every cardinal is constructively Janssen. Uh, yeah, I always forget where to put the accent in Janssen's name. So 
I want to push this analogy to the situation for Hod and L. The, the point, I guess, is that if you could really strengthen the analogy between um, the side of Jensen's covering lemma where V is far from L and that side of the Hod dichotomy, then you would sort of be arguing that that side of the Hod dichotomy is possible. So like, if you could analyze embeddings from Hod to Hod, stuff like that, then you could make a case that they're consistent. Right, right now, there, there isn't really such a case. Okay, so uh, a cardinal lambda is omega Janssen. If whenever you have a function, not from lambda to the less than omega, but now from omega sequences in lambda to lambda, again, you can find a large set A proper subset lambda, cardinality lambda, under uh, post under F. And I should say about about these hypotheses, if, if you haven't seen Janssen cardinals before, the point uh, here, uh, or, original reason Janssen defined them is um, it's equivalent to the existence of sort of a, a first order structure on lambda. Um, so lambda is not Janssen if there's a first order structure you can put on a structure of size lambda that has no uh, proper substructure um, of size lambda. So it's a sort of rigidity property of some structure and, and this is saying there are no structures with that property. Um, and Omega Janssen is saying the same thing, but for infinitary algebras. So algebras that, that may have in, in infinitely many or structures that have uh, operations on that have infinite arity. They take in Omega sequences of elements. And um, well, it's a theorem that there, there are none. Sort of a theme in combinatorial set theory is that you can't have infinitary partition relations like this in the context of AC. Um, so, but you can weaken Omega Janssen to instead apply to Hod. So, Actually, I should say this is really closely related to the Kuhn inconsistency theorem. If there's a J from V to V, then there are Omega Janssen cardinals. And Kuhn's original proof of the Kuhn inconsistency theorem goes like, well, assume there's a J from V to V, then there's an Omega Janssen cardinal, then apply this theorem and you get a contradiction. So, so the fact that there are none is closely related to the fact that there are no choiceless cardinals. And as far as I know, the, the only consistency proof for, the only consistency proof for an Omega Janssen cardinal I know goes through something close to, um, something close to choiceless large cardinals. Okay. Uh, so Lambda is definably Omega Janssen. I, I mean, it's, it's really the, the natural analog of how you stated constructively uh, Janssen. So if uh, for all ordinal definable f from lambda to the omega to lambda, there's some a properly contained lambda, cardinality of a is equal to lambda uh, f image a to the omega is contained. So it's, it's just this same, exactly the same property, but restricted to ordinal definable functions. And again, you can't demand that A is ordinal definable, or you would be saying that uh, lambda is omega Janssen and hot can't be because hot is a model of the axiom of choice. Okay. So the, the theorem, the point here, it's another analogy. Uh, between choiceless large cardinals 
and hod and embeddings from L to L and L. So if cap is strongly compact, then um, the hod hypothesis fails. If and only if every cardinal, every regular cardinal lambda greater than or equal to kappa is definably omega Janssen. So it's um it's exactly like this fact. Just instead of uh, Janssen, you go to omega Janssen. Of course, you can have Janssen cardinals in Hod without the Hod hypothesis failing, because Janssen cardinals are they're reasonable large cardinal hypothesis, but you can't have omega Janssen cardinals because they contradict the axiom of choice. So sort of the, the omega Janssen cardinals are acting like the large cardinals that you can't have in, in HOD or you can't have in a model of AC that are um, making the HOD hypothesis fail. But you can actually, the, the, the main point here is that you can actually get these large cardinals back from the failure of the HOD hypothesis. So it's an equivalence. I don't know if that makes this look more plausible or less plausible. It's funny to extract some strength from when I have from a hypothesis like the hot hypothesis. You get this strong consequence and then say, well, that makes it seem like the hot hypothesis is consistent. I mean, the failure of the hot hypo hypothesis is consistent. Like that's going the wrong way. Okay. So I wanted to go now into some uh, equivalence of the Hod conjecture. So reasons maybe to think that the Hod conjecture is true. So th these are the constraints on large cardinal axioms imposed by the Hod conjecture that I was uh, I mentioned in the beginning. So, Suppose you have two definable embedding from V into the same model. Then uh, in general, J0 of alpha is equal to J1 of alpha for all ordinals. So these are sort of your, your prototypical large cardinal embeddings and this is a, a uniqueness property of them. They're uniquely determined by our model that they embed the universe into. Um, and this the theorem is, is proof for definable embeddings. So this is a version of the fact that there's no definable embedding from V to V except for the identity. Right? Because if you take J0 to be the identity, then J1 is definable has to equal J on the ordinals. So it's a strong version of that. And the proof is really easy. Sort of just say, well, it's a, this is a theorem schema, right? Because it's about definable embeddings. So uh, this, uh, that J0 and J1 are sigma n counter examples. And let alpha be the least ordinal such that there are sigma n definable elementary embeddings i0 and i1 from v into some model n such that i0 of alpha is not equal to i1 of alpha. And the point is that alpha is uh, definable without parameters. Um, uh, something that's going on here is that you can talk about whether a definable embedding is elementary in a first order way. Um, that's sort of an important fact in formulating large cardinals. Um, it's just because any embedding that's just a little bit elementary, if it preserves like sigma one sentences, it will be fully elementary. Um, 
So alpha is definable without parameters. Uh, but that means that I0 and I1, they go to the same model, so they have to shift alpha to the same place because you have to shift it to the ordinal that's defined. That's a contradiction. So yeah, that, the, the proof is very simple. Uh, doesn't use the axiom of choice at all. You could ask, um, what about undefinable embeddings? Um, so it, to prove this, that requires giving yet another proof of the Kuhn inconsistency theorem. So you better use the axiom of choice or else you'll refute uh, the Kuhn uh, you'll refute J from V to V to F. So this is a sort of very uh, different thing to try to prove from this, which is just soft. Okay, so how, um, what turns out to be true, well, what, what Wooden pointed out is that if the Hod conjecture is true, if the Hod hypothesis holds, really a strong version, then uh, undefinable embeddings are also uniquely determined on the ordinals by their target models. So with no definability constraint on these two embeddings, uh, you can prove that they agree on all ordinals using the strong hot hypothesis. But what actually turns out to be true is that in general, if you have two elementary embeddings from B to M, they agree on all the ordinals. That's a theorem proved this year. And um, so it's sort of strange confirmation of uh, a consequence of the Hod conjecture um, in ZFC. And also it's another version of the consistency theorem. You can ask about the local form of this, uh, this conjecture. Uh, or this uniqueness property. If you have two embeddings of a rank initial segment of the universe into some model, do they have to agree on all the ordin ordinals? And that's just not true. If you have a super compact cardinal, uh, it's just false. But um, the embeddings that you get that way can't be that similar. So, so for a regular cardinal delta, say that two embeddings are delta similar if they map delta to the same place. And um, if you look at the supremum of them on all ordinals less than delta, that's the same for each of them. Um, the point of this constraint, the reason it's um, a nice constraint is that you can, um, all the, the, the collection of delta similar embeddings are, is ordinal definable. Uh, but for any embedding J, all of the delta similar embeddings to J is ordinal definable because it's determined by where J is sending delta and this supremum, it's definable from those two parameters. So that's what's being used here. But um, the theorem is that if kappa is extendable and delta is regular, um, the Hod hypothesis holds if and only if uh, for all sufficiently large lambda greater than or equal to delta, um, if J0 and J1 from V lambda to M are delta similar, 
then they agree on the delta. So the, the hot hypothesis can be reformulated, at least in, in the context of extendable cardinals, as a constraint on an embeddings that's just a local form of something that's provable in ZFC. Okay. So I have like 20 minutes left, right? Is that true? Yeah, sure, sure. Did. Okay, so I want to talk about um, proving the hot conjecture, uh, the hot dichotomy theorem from weaker large cardinal hypotheses than extendables. I mentioned some things that are related to this results that follow from strongly compacts and super compacts instead of extendables. Uh, I'll use this kind of thing. So the, the theorem, what's interesting about it, I think, is that it shows that the the Hod dichotomy theorem, which seems to be part of the motivation behind the Hod conjecture, it shows that that theorem doesn't have all that much to do with Hod. It just uses a very weak property of Hod. So Minner model is omega club amenable. If the omega club filter, so that's the, the it's like the club filter, except you don't demand uh, that the sets are closed and bounded. You only demand that they're closed under supremums of omega sequences. So the omega club filter on any ordinal uh, is amenable to the model. So filter, you can restrict it to sets in the model. That's f intersect n. So n is omega club amenable if f intersect n is in n for every ordinal. So HOD is an omega club amenable model because the omega club filter is definable. So the omega club filter restricted to HOD in HOD. But lots of models are omega club amenable. Um, like uh, you can just construct from all the omega club filters and you're gonna get a model that's omega club amenable, model of ZFC. So, and that, that model is not necessary. It's not going to be a large model under large cardinal hypotheses. It's going to be small. So it'll fall on, on side two of this dichotomy I'm about to state. So the, the theorem is that if you have an omega club amenable model of CFC uh, and a strongly co combat cardinal kappa, then exactly the hot dichotomy holds, basically. So either you have this form of weak covering so all n regular cardinals delta uh, have their cofinality equal to their cardinality, or uh, all sufficiently large regular cardinals are measurable in n, and really um, they're omega strongly measurable. Um, so, so what is this one? So it's not quite the the covering that you got in the in the Jensen theorem or in Wooden's hot dichotomy, but it it it's in inner model theory. This statement is called weak covering or strong covering. Um, so it implies, for example, that if lambda is a singular cardinal, then lambda is singular in N, and uh, N correctly computes the successor. So the, the closeness of Hod to V that you got in the Hod dichotomy also just follows from this. I don't think um, actually the version of the Hod dichotomy that I stated uh, from an extendable is unpublished and all the published versions only prove this. So, but it's still reasonable to ask if that was compact. So, Another nice thing about this theorem is that it's from a much weaker hypothesis than extendable cardinal. Strongly compact cardinals are seem much weaker than extendables. First measurable can be, I mean, the first strongly compact can be the first measurable, but also uh, any extendable cardinal is a limit of super compact cardinals. So it's much bigger than first strongly compact. 
so so that means this kind of covering is, is taking hold much lower than at the first extendable cardinal, which is to me actually more interesting than weakening the large cardinal hypothesis is the fact that you're strengthening the kind of covering that you prove. Um, and it's right at the, the sort of large cardinals that are being targeted by inner model theory. Okay, so the, the covering question is sort of a technical thing, but um, it, it's annoying that you can't, I can't prove that uh, you get the, the exact version of Jensen covering that you can get from an extendable cardinal. Um, it, it seems really plausible and tractable that, that you actually can. Um, so here you go. It feels like it. You should figure that out. Um, so the, what, what you can prove though, like what, what makes it seem so plausible is that you can almost prove this cover, covering property. It's just that there's some error. So the question is if Kappa is strongly compact and the Hod hypothesis holds, does Hod cover V above Kappa? So if you have a set of ordinals of size, at least Kappa, can it be covered by a set of the same cardinality that belongs to Hod? Um, okay. Well, one thing you do get is this lambda cover property. So an inner model M has the lambda cover property if whenever A is a set of ordinals size less than lambda, A is covered by a set of ordinals in M. Size less than lambda. So it's a one cardinal at a time version of the Jensen covering property. The Jensen covering property is equivalent to the lambda cover property for all uh, uncountable, for all lambda greater than or equal to omega. Right. That, that's uh, another way of stating the, the Jensen covering property that's true of L. And one would want to prove. Hod has the lambda cover property for all cardinals lambda greater than or equal to the first supercompact. Since you can prove that for all, all cardinals greater than or equal to the first. And all I can prove is um, for all under the Hod hypothesis. Um, for all strong limit cardinals greater than or equal to the least strongly compact cardinal. Hod has the lambda cover property. Sort of um, interesting because you don't know how to prove this for an arbitrary omega club amenable model. Um, so th this is sort of using more about HOD than the, than the proof of the HOD dichotomy uses. Um, another weird thing that happens uh, at smaller cardinals than the first extendable uh, is that the sort of absoluteness between large cardinals and HOD that you get from the HOD dichotomy breaks. Uh, breaks down. So if cap is extendable and you have the hot hypothesis, then all large cardinal axioms, uh, all large cardinals above kappa are downwards absolute to hot. So for example, um, the extendable cardinal kappa is extendable in hot. Uh, any strong cardinal above kappa is strong in hot, and any wooden cardinal above kappa is wooden in hot. And, huge cardinal above kappa is huge and hot and whatever. Um, so the, the way that this is proved is by proving um, basically that hod inherits uh, compactness measures from B and then showing abstractly that any model that uh, inherits a compactness cardinal in some nice way actually has all large cardinals downwards absolute to it. So Hod is a weak extender model of kappa is super compact, sort of 
strange grammatical construction. Um, what it means is that for all lambda greater than or equal to kappa, there is a normal fine kappa complete ultra filter. So a super compactness measure on P kappa lambda, let's say, uh, call it U, such that U intersect Hod is in Hod. So this is, U is amenable to Hod in the same way the filter is. Um, and uh, U concentrates on Hod. So all this is um, really saying is that um, that U is a normal fine ultra filter in Hod. That these two constraints mean that. So U what if Hod needs to be U? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so you want U to concentrate on ordinal definable uh, kappa sequences so that you can restrict U and still get an ultra filter on P kappa lambda in HOD. Uh, and you want the restriction to be in HOD so that it's still an ultra filter in HOD. So this is saying that kappa is sort of super compact in HOD in the natural way, right? Uh, super compactness would just say this. For all lambda, there are kappa complete normal fine ultra filters, but we don't want them in HOD. So this is sort of um, what a canonical model for a super compact cardinal supposedly should look like. Um, it should inherit super compactness from the universe of sets in this way. Uh, so uh, if cap is extendable, you can prove that HOD is a weak extender model and for the super compactness of kappa. And that implies that Hod inherits all large cardinals above kappa. But at, uh, at smaller large cardinals, you can't do this. So for example, so this theorem of Cheng Friedman Hamkins, I think that states that if, um, if kappa is, well, it's consistent with the Hod hypothesis Uh, that kappa is super compact, but not weakly compact and hot. So that's sort of weird. Um, if you could show this kind of consistency at the level of an extendable cardinal, you would refute the hot conjecture. But uh, you can't prove the downwards absoluteness of, of super compact and strongly compact cardinals to HOD. Um, you can do it for extendables, but not super compacts. That's super not hypothesis. So that, that's sort of what makes, um, that's what makes this uh, theorem from a weaker large cardinal hypothesis significantly different from, from Wooden's theorem. Um, but you can sort of get some version of super compactness in HOD. Uh, that's sort of the last thing I want to talk about. Uh, Cardinal is distributively super compact if um, for all lambda greater than or equal to kappa, uh, there is a forcing extension uh, with no new less than kappa sequences uh, in which kappa is lambda super compact. So you can add in these normal fine ultra filters without adding in small sequences. And uh, the hot hypothesis implies that Kappa is super compact. 
Ein paar Minuten. Willst du jetzt essen? Uh, okay. Uh, if kappa is super compact, then kappa is distributively super compact and hot. So, since these um, forcing extensions don't change the less than kappa sequences, in particular, they don't change V kappa. So any uh, consequence of a super compact cardinal uh, for sets below the super compact cardinal uh, has to be true in, in HOD. So any, any large cardinal axiom that you can reflect below a super compact has to exist in, in HOD. And this theorem, so the way it actually works is by extending HOD to a weak extender model. So one minute. Uh, so say an inner model is super compact at kappa. If for all lambda greater than or equal to kappa, there's a normal fine ultra filter. Kappa complete. U on p kappa lambda, such that p kappa lambda intersect M is in U. So there's just a, a normal fine ultra filter that concentrates on M for every lambda. So it's a largeness property of M. It's big enough that there are normal fine ultra filters that concentrate on it. So the hot, hot hypothesis implies that hot is super compact and in fact that every normal fine ultra filter concentrates on hot. But the theorem is that um, the following are equivalent and super compact. and M extends to a weak extender model with no new less than kappa sequences. So this weak extender model that has no new less than kappa sequences will have all large cardinals true in V. Uh, they'll, they'll be downwards absolute to this model. So for example, a huge cardinal. If there's a huge cardinal above kappa, there'll be a huge cardinal in this uh, weak extender model extending M. But if there's a huge cardinal above the first super compact cardinal, there's a huge cardinal below it. So that means that M will have a huge cardinal. It will just be below the first super compact cardinal. It will be below kappa. Even though M doesn't see that kappa is super compact, it just sees all the consequences of super compactness below kappa. So the same will be true for pod, just in general. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna speak again for a while. But anyway, I had some conclusions. So the hod conjecture is equivalent to a local version of some features of large cardinals that are provable in ZFC. And the negation of the HOD conjecture, really the negation of the HOD hypothesis is equivalent to weak versions of embeddings from HOD to itself, or weak versions of the choiceless large cardinal axioms. Um, yeah, and next time I'm, I'm gonna prove basically. Okay. Thanks. Great, Gabe. Thanks so much. It was a fantastic talk, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you, Gabe. I learned so much. <laughs> it was great. Okay, questions? Oh, I have a question. Um, yeah, um, sort of a historical question. Um, in, well, in this work, is the ever exploit the relationship between hereditary ordinal definability and second order constructability? Not, not really. I mean, that analogy is interesting, right? Because you've got this Jensen dichotomy theorem for L, which is the you know, iterated first order definability, and then this version for Hod, which is iterated second order definability, but I don't know if that 
perspective has been it hasn't been too useful for me. Thank there's, you. There's an interesting I mean because you often end up in this sort of situation where you don't have the axiom of choice there it's not actually true in that context mm -hmm. necessarily that uh hot is the same thing as iterated second order definability hot could be strictly larger mm -hmm. sort of the interesting question is is whether um that you can actually prove that hot is larger from from these choiceless lectern hypotheses Yeah, there, there is, um, of course, uh, long ago, there were right forcing uh, constructions which uh, showed um, the difference between second order constructability and HOD without the axiom of choice, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was pointed out to me. Um, the, uh, sort of another interesting consistency question there is um, if you look at Oh yeah, that, that the paper that I saw didn't seem to settle the question of, of whether iterated second order definability is the same thing as hod of L of the power of the ordinals. That I'm not I'm not certain whether that's true or not. Mm -hmm. Seems. Okay. <laughs> hey, could I ask a tangential question? Yeah. When you were talking about um, Omega Janssen cardinal. You said that, if I understood correctly, that to get the, the ways you know of getting such things all go via choiceless large cardinals. And my immediate reaction was, well, wait a minute, isn't the Jan an Omega Janssen cardinal itself a choiceless large cardinal? Uh, it's certainly choiceless. Is the issue that it's somehow not large? <laughs> yeah, I think it's. Um... It's like a combinatorial choiceless large cardinal, like um, the existence of a normal ultra filter uh, mm -hmm. on a successor cardinal. And actually, I, the, I hesitated then because I wonder whether um, whether AD implies the existence of small Omega Janssen cardinals. Um, so it, the, the thing about combinatorial choiceless large cardinals is that they're often not very strong, like the existence of a super compact cardinal in, in terms of normal fine yeah. ultra filters is, is not as strong as, not nearly as strong as a super compact. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, the, the consistency proof, so, uh, you can ask how strong is it to have lambda be omega Janssen, but also have uh, the axiom of choice true in phi lambda, or have um, uh, have lambda DC true, and that seems like it could be very strong. And um, it's uh, it's true uh, under like the strongest uh, choice large cardinal axioms. It's uh, it's true of lambda in L of V lambda plus one if the axiom I0 holds, uh -huh. okay. just by Kunin's uh, proof. Yeah, so that, okay. but yeah, that, that distinction, it is a choiceless large cardinal, it just might not be that strong. Okay. Like, um, you know, Janssen cardinals are also large cardinals, but they're you know, marginal. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, Let's see. If no one else has a question, I have another. But yeah, please. I should shut up if somebody else wants to. <laughs> um, let's see. When you were talking about these um, distributive, distributively large, uh -huh. so there was a dichotomy there. Item item one said something holds above a certain cardinal, and then item two said. Yeah, let's see, we need to get where the, where there were models called N. And just, yeah, distributively super compact. Um, let's see, no. I, oh, are you looking for the Omega Club amenable things? Um, 
there were models called okay. A here. Let's see. Yeah, so yeah, there we go. That's that's what I want, the very bottom of that slide. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've got the strongly compact, and item one says um, above there, one, number one type stuff holds. Yeah. Number two says number two type stuff holds all sufficiently large. Oh, yeah. Um, is that just greater than or equal to lambda and kappa, or is that um, can't. A, a more subtle notion of sufficient? Yeah, you, you can't. Um really lower bounded explicitly. Uh -huh. you, you can't, I think you can't define where it starts in a, I don't know, sigma two way or something. Uh, so it, it happens, but before the first extendable cardinal, mm -hmm. uh, that all cardinals become measurable, uh, regular cardinals become measurable in N. But uh, it, you can, it, if it's even consistent for two to hold, for, for example, for HOD, um, then you can force that two holds for HOD, but, but it doesn't start holding right at the first strongly compact. Uh -huh. You can actually, I think you can make D lambda be equal to HOD up to lambda for lambda as large as you want. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks. Yeah. One minor question. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, you mentioned a dozen different, are there any significantly different proofs of the De Kuhnen theorem? Uh, significantly? Yeah, I would, say, I would say that there are many, uh, almost entirely different proofs. They don't, they don't reduce to the same uh, combinatorial consequences of AC. So they're different and they establish different things. Like for example, uh, I mentioned that, that Wooden proved that if there's a J from D to V and you have lambda limit of extendable cardinals, then lambda or lambda plus is measurable. Uh, so that, that doesn't follow from the usual proof of the Kuhn inconsistency theorem. It follows from Wooden's proof of the Kuhn inconsistency theorem, which has to do with uh, splitting stationary sets, another important consequence of AC. So th there are really a, a, a lot of different proofs. In, um, in Kanamori's book, there are maybe four, yeah, four proofs of the Kuhn inconsistency theorem. There's there's one, uh, my, my favorite one is the least well-known one. Uh, it's Harada's proof of the Kuhn inconsistency theorem. It, that's the only one that sort of seems to not use any like coincidental combinatorics. I don't know. It seems like a natural proof under AC, but there, there's one that uses PCF theory or the existence of scales. This is, uh, Sapotal's proof. Yeah, so there's a lot. So it's in the infinite, in the book, the infinite? Yeah, the book. Okay. Anyone else? Um, I would have a quick question, um, maybe a slightly philosophical one for the conclusion, if that's okay. So? Hello? Hi, what did you ask? Uh, I said I, I would have a, a question with a maybe slightly philosophical bent towards the end. Might, this might be fitting. Uh -huh. uh, so I think you said at some point um, that, uh, yeah, if, if the choiceless cardinals are consistent, then, um, okay, that's not exactly what you said. I think what I understood was basically if they are consistent, they are, the, uh, one should ex assume them to be true. So I just, I, I guess, uh, I, I want to try to understand why you would say that. So I, I'm not familiar with all the all the axioms. Um, is it the case that I can always um, straightforwardly assume choice up to a given point where there would be a problem? So I, I never lose anything by, by assuming, uh, uh, these choices so, cardinal axioms? Um, I, 
I didn't mean to to say that uh, if the choiceless large cardinals are consistent, you should assume that they're true. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm I'll say I can't say, but, but to answer the question you asked, um, so if you have a, a a J from B to V, mm -hmm. J has some critical point kappa, and then you can look at J of kappa, and or with J of kappa, and look at J of J of kappa. Um, and then you can keep going. Uh, up here, you'll get uh, the limit of all these kappas. All lambda, it'll be fixed by j. What seems to be true, and I think it's relatively consistent, is if you have a j from b to v, then uh, you can have the axiom of choice hold all the way up to lambda. And you cannot have a well ordering of the lambda plus one or of the power set of lambda. So you can have maybe even lambda DC, although that seems stronger. Um, and this sort of axiom. So, you know, this the same way you think of, you wouldn't deny that there's a super compact cardinal because then you're just living in the kappa or kappa is super compact or somewhere below there so you're restricting the universe if you like the same kind of argument uh says that you you should you know accept these choiceless crazy choiceless large cardinals and uh, uh otherwise you're just restricting yourself to this small part of the universe where the axiom of choice is true uh, and i i'm not making that argument i just don't think it's that different from the arguments people make for large cardinals i really yeah. like this way of looking at it. I don't think I heard it before. A nice thing is um, if you start with the choiceless large cardinal axioms, you can uh, wooden's forcing for class forcing the axiom of choice, you can use it to, to force the axiom of choice up to lambda. And you can't make it work if you go farther than lambda. So that sort of meshes with the idea that these aren't inconsistent. Okay, thank you. I think that the, the most plausible scenario for the choiceless large cardinals, maybe, is um, that you can prove that they hold in inner models uh, under the assumption of large cardinals consistent with choice. Uh, so recently, Farmer Schlutzenberg showed that if um, if there's a J from L of V lambda plus one to L of V lambda plus one, which is axiom I zero, um, like the strongest, one of the strongest known large cardinal axioms, then, um, then in an inner model, uh, there's a, elementary embedding from V lambda plus two to V lambda plus two. So there's an inner model that satisfies this large cardinal axiom. So that's the, the large cardinal axiom that's really uh, being refuted by all the proofs of Kunin's inconsistency there are more, most of them. Uh, so, so that, that one is actually consistent relative to large cardinals, uh, consistent with choice. And it could be that that goes all the way up to a J from V to V. And so you can incorporate these statements of very high consistency strength without rejecting the axiom of choice. Pretty similar to the situation with the axiom of determinacy. Okay, but can, can you do that further? Because at some point, these stronger choices, large, large cardinals, start implying things like I0 and stuff, or no? Start implying things like what? I, I start implying things like I0, like the strongest versions that we have of the, uh, of the choice ones. Yeah, so, so these two principles, uh, I0 and this J from B lambda plus 2 to B lambda plus 2, 
are equiconsistent. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's not known whether uh, you can get an inner model with a j from v lambda plus three to v lambda plus three. Uh, so that that is a very appealing open question, I think. Um, there are large cardinal axioms stronger than I zero, which uh, look like the the right principles that you, to use to try to get an inner model of j from v lambda plus three to v lambda plus three. So Wooden has this tract suitable extender models part two beyond omega huge, um, where where he defines an axiom. So the there's supposed to be an analogy between um, L of V lambda plus one under the axiom I zero and L of R under the axiom of determinacy in L of R. Um, so Wooden defines the analog of the axiom of real determinacy and the minimal model of ADR. And that seems to be the a plausible large cardinal, I'm not plausible large cardinal, but a plausible place or large cardinals consistent with choice to imply an inner, an inner model of J from V lambda plus three to V lambda plus three. There could be an equiconsistency there as well. So if that kind of pattern continues, you could get models for many of the choiceless large cardinals and possibly not models for choiceless large cardinals strong enough to refute the Hodd conjecture. So there's also Alice scenario where some of the choiceless large cardinals are consistent and the Hodd conjecture is still true. Anyone else? Okay, then I'm going to turn off the recording now.